I am at the Idol Dorg Museum in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I am here for one of my all-time favorite Christmas attractions, Jingle Rails. Each holiday season, the Idol Dorg puts up an expansive and incredibly detailed folk art model railroad, featuring recreations of great landmarks of the American West. As someone who spends a lot of time in the West and loves the region, Jingle Rails is kind of perfect, and it brings some Western history and charm to the Midwest. The exhibit includes several G-scale model trains on tracks that meander through national parks and other Western landmarks. Well, actually the first location visitors encounter is downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. And that is the Isle Dorg Museum itself, a southwestern Pueblo-style building in the middle of downtown. It is made of cork. These tableaus and structures are made out of all sorts of interesting and unexpected materials. And there a train passes through Indianapolis around the Soldiers and Sailors Monument on Monument Circle. The historic monument does become one of the largest Christmas trees in the world during the holiday season. I have filmed it lit up in the past. There's the historic Hilbert Circle Theater and the Christmas Tree Window Building. There's the tops of the two tallest skyscrapers in the city. And that is Lucas Oil Stadium, the football stadium. And now we transition into the whimsical American West. That is the Cataldo Mission, a Catholic mission church that was built in the early 19th century in northern Idaho, near Coeur d'Alene. Here's a traditional Blackfoot camp with teepees. There are several layers of track around these wooden mountain ranges. And here's a Wild West town. There are lots of wooden trestle bridges hanging overhead. And here is Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, which has to be my favorite national park. There's the historic Old Faithful Inn, which is a masterpiece of rustic architecture and definitely one of my favorite hotels. I do have a video tour of the real hotel on my channel. I noticed some boiling hot springs below the hotel. And there is Old Faithful, which erupts fairly consistently, just like the real thing. Although the real one is infinitely more impressive. The train passes under the Roosevelt Arch at the Gardner, Montana entrance to the park which was dedicated by the great Theodore Roosevelt. I have made a video on that too. Now we are getting into Glacier National Park, which has some impressive tall peaks here at Jingle Rails, just like the real park has. And here's a replication of the Glacier Park Hotel, 
a historic 1910 rustic hotel right by the National Park. Again, the scale and immense detail here is fantastic. This is the great western artist C.M. Russell's Montana Cabin. You can see his painting easel next to it. They actually have some works of his in this museum. And towering above his cabin is Mount Rushmore. The mountainside likenesses of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. That is amazing. There's a stagecoach and a train passing by another Wild West town. I believe this is a gold rush town in Northern California. There's a church and an outhouse. There is a Tlingit totem pole village, just like the ones in Alaska. There's some cool miniature totem poles here, although real totem poles are way taller than that. Here's an abandoned hillside Northern California silver mine. There are several of these still standing today. Here is a traditional Miwok village with some bark homes and a roundhouse. And there is majestic Yosemite Falls, the tallest waterfall in the contiguous United States, roaring above Yosemite National Park. And here's the historic Awahani Hotel in Yosemite. That original name has thankfully been restored recently. Over here is Sin City, also known as Las Vegas, Nevada. Trains pass above the Great Hoover Dam in Lake Mead. The lake looks a lot more full here than it actually did this year. There's also a sign for Red Rock Canyon. I've been there. Here is a fabulous fusion of iconic Las Vegas hotels and attractions. I believe that yellow submarine is from an extinct restaurant called The Dive and it is protruding from a giant slot machine. There's the Paris Las Vegas hot air balloon sign. And there's the half scale Eiffel Tower replica. And Vegas Vicky is perched on the Eiffel Tower. The famous Vegas Vic neon sign is also back there. 
there's a classic 24-hour wedding chapel, and there's the Luxor Sphinx, the classic sign, and an Elvis advertisement. And there's some poker chips and the Venetian gondolas. Trains pass over the Golden Gate Bridge, a San Francisco Bay landmark that connects Las Vegas with Aspen, Colorado here at Jingle Rails. Here is Aspen, Colorado, a very bougie ski resort town. The ski lift used to move in this display. This is the mighty Grand Canyon of Arizona. I imagine the Grand Canyon is difficult to convey in this form, but they did a pretty good job making it out of various types of wood here at Jingle Rails. Trains do meander through the canyon floor here. That's the historic Grand Canyon Village Railroad Depot, where the Grand Canyon Railway still stops today. And there is the majestic El Tavar Hotel at Grand Canyon Village, a classic Harvey Hotel overlooking the canyon. I've been there. There's some hot air balloons reminiscent of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Behind the Grand Canyon is the Cliff Palace of Mesa Verde National Park, the largest Pueblo and cliff dwelling in the West. I've seen the real one, it is quite impressive. Here is the new tableau for this year, featuring San Francisco, California. Last time I was here they had a really cool Route 66 display here, but unfortunately it's not out this year, so this one is really good. That is the Palace of Fine Arts, built for the Panama Pacific Exposition over a hundred years ago. There is a classic trolley cable car meandering through San Francisco. There's another cable car that goes up a steep incline. That could probably be considered a funicular, although it does not appear to be moving. And there are the iconic painted ladies. Some of the beautiful Victorian homes perched above the city. Also, there's Lombard Street, which technically isn't the crookedest street in the city. Here is the classic Fisherman's Wharf, a very famous tourist hotspot. The wharf is famous for its congregation of sea lions. And of course, out in the harbor is infamous Alcatraz Island home to the inescapable federal penitentiary that held Al Capone and many other criminals. And here are some of the famous skyscrapers of San Francisco. That's the Columbus Tower, a really beautiful turn of the century building. 
here is Coit Tower, a historic observation tower. And there's the Transamerica Pyramid, an unusual pyramid skyscraper that is one of the tallest buildings in the city. The new San Francisco display is really great. It definitely makes me want to visit that city because clearly there's a ton of cool stuff there. And now we return back to Indiana. Here is a Park County covered bridge. Park County, Indiana is actually home to the largest concentration of covered bridges in the country. That is Union Station in Indianapolis, built in the 1880s. And here's another view of downtown Indianapolis. A very clear view of all the skyscrapers they have featured. Salesforce Tower on the right is the tallest building in the city, followed by the One America Tower next to it. There's also the Fifth Third Bank Tower and the historic Circle Tower. And on this side of the Lucas Oil Stadium, you can actually peer into the stadium and see a recreated interior of the football field. Also, that is the historic N.K. Hearst building in Indianapolis, whose owners refused to take the money for it to be demolished when they were constructing the new football stadium, and hence the stadium was built at a slight angle. When I first arrived, they were having some trouble getting the lights on in the display, so they let me go through to show jingle rails in the dark which most people don't get to see. So consider this a nighttime tour of Jingle Rails. And the lights are back on. The day is saved. So I have exited the main display, but Jingle Rails actually expands into the hallway now. Here is a little tableau of the Indiana State Fairgrounds. I have filmed a few videos on the State Fair and its history. There's the Midway Ferris Wheel, 
and the Historic Art Deco Coliseum. And that is the Normandy Barn, a historic barn that was moved to the fairgrounds for exhibits. And right next to the State Fair is a new feature, the world famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway, home to the Indy 500. This is arguably the most famous racetrack in the entire world. So here it is replicated in miniature. They do actually have race cars circling the track. That's pretty cool. And there's a Goodyear blimp. So Jingle Rail still holds up as perhaps my favorite Christmas attraction. As a national park and travel enthusiast, especially when it pertains to the American West, this is hard to beat. While I certainly have not been everywhere depicted in the exhibit, I've been to quite a few of the locations displayed and have videos on them if you're interested in looking those up. Now I'm going to take a quick look through the museum. I have filmed a full tour of it and that video will be linked in the description if you're interested. It does look like they have changed some things in the Western Art Gallery. There's a cast of Frederick Remington's iconic Bronco Buster. There's a pretty impressive collection of Remington paintings and sculptures here. This is an incredible three-piece portrayal of the Grand Canyon. While this looks like something Albert Bierstadt would have done, it was actually made by an artist in 2012. Here is a Georgia O'Keeffe painting of the Red Hills near her ranch in Abiquiu, New Mexico. Speaking of New Mexico, there's the Penitentes, known for their self-flagellation. There's Thomas Moran's Grand Canyon. And there are some C.M. Russell bronzes. The artist's cabin was in Jingle Rails. This museum has a really great collection of Western artwork, largely made up of the collection of Harrison Eiljorg, and it's well worth seeing any day of the year. I'll come back and make a new video tour of the museum some other time. On the second floor, they have an exhibit on Native American history and culture, but it appears they are completely renovating and reimagining that exhibit it is supposed to reopen in June of 2022, so I'm interested to see what changes they're making. I found the old signs about Native American history in Indiana in a back corner. I wonder if they're retiring these. They did have one room of Native American artifacts and crafts on display. There's some turquoise jewelry and some carved Hopi figures. There's also a special exhibit on right now called Shifting Boundaries, displaying the works of a few select contemporary Native American artists. That's a sweet artist ride. So that was Jingle Rails at the Isle George Museum of American Indians and Western Art, a very unique and wonderful Christmas attraction featuring model trains and the Great American West. I definitely recommend visiting to see this one exhibit. The attention to detail is just overwhelming. And once the Native American exhibits reopen, I would highly recommend visiting this museum if you're in Indianapolis. If you enjoyed the video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe. I have filmed hundreds of videos on museums, roadside attractions, national parks, and much more, including many videos at locations depicted in Jingle Rails, and many more that were omitted. The West is very big. So if you're interested, please feel free to take a look at my other content, and thanks for watching.